Hey everybody, welcome to Hit or Die Podcast, episode 98. Here with your hosts, Jake Saldati and Chad Rothford. Um, got a Fresno State guest today we'll get to. Uh, 98. Part of the, well, yeah, 98. 98. We're there. We're almost there. We're almost to 100. Closer and closer. <clears throat> um, our guest will be, I guess, the key underdog, the wonder dog. Uh, in game three, for sure, Steve Detweiler. I uh, can't wait to get him on. Uh, but before then... We have our sponsor, Bland Company. Uh, again, thank you to Bland for sticking with us for uh, the last month and a half or so. Uh, heating, solar, roofing, uh, any project you are looking to get into, uh, any needs that you have in solar or heating uh, or roofing areas, they can take care of you. Uh, Jesse Dara is the man to contact. Uh, you want to go visit blandcompany.com. For all the information, um, they have some pictures of the their showroom. I don't know if it's open currently uh, due to COVID, but uh, blandcompany.com is where you want to go check it out. It got a great website. Everything you need to know is there. Uh, again, that's B L A N D company.com. Uh, one thing we got to was a couple of weeks ago, we had Mark Gardner on and we went through his no hit bid uh, against the Dodgers. And just after that, we got a message, uh, Coach Jimenez from Dinuba, and there was an great eight, supporter, by the way, huge Always supporter, yeah, supporting us. Uh, sent us a a uh, box score from a NAIA game. The team threw a no hitter. The final score was and lost. Did they lose? They lost. They, lost. they did lose. It was eleven seven. Final. The team that had seven got no hit. They but they were walked. How do you? Oh, the how team that had eleven got. The team that won got no hit. No, the no, lost? no. The team that lost. Oh, the team got, that lost still okay. They got no hit, but they scored seven runs. How is that possible? Uh, they walked fifteen times, and the team that won had six errors. There's got to be some pass balls mixed in there too. That's a rough. There's got to be a whole lot of uh, if that if that game's somewhere on film, guys falling down and <laughs> running into each other and um, little league baseball. I mean, I, I don't who's know. to say it, that one of those errors wasn't a hit? Who's the score? I think the uh, team that lost was the home team. So I don't know. I mean, eleven errors combined, twenty-two walks combined, and I think twenty strikeouts combined. That's uh, but yet 18 runs and one no hitter and one, no- <laughs> one combined no hitter. How many pitchers were in there? Uh, that, where's that at? How many pitchers combined on this? Like 20 uh, for the winning That's- team? One, two, three, four, five. I see six, a six combined, a six pitcher combined. No hitter. That's something to 204 go. pitches. We'll probably never see again. Yeah. I just that thought might that be was... the most pitches ever in a no hitter yeah, too. Yeah, it could be. We get our statistician on that. Yeah, let me check it out. Yep, it is. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, and college baseball fired up over the weekend. Thank God. The only problem is it wasn't on TV. Uh, there I was, was a so couple. Pissed. Well, depending I... on Direct TV, I, I... you don't uh, you get the Pac-12 channel, don't you? Or I do. I see. Do. I don't. So I get the SEC, the Big Ten, and the ACC channel. And depending on if there was a basketball game, which nobody watches, um, they played the basketball game. You don't watch. Not no, nobody. Basketball's stupid. It's Basketball sucks. Hey, wait um, a second. It's not even fun to watch you anymore. You say that now. But what? But we might have a little treat coming. Yes. Up. But that's when basketball was good. Okay. So, um, but right now, basketball's not even fun to watch. Uh, yet it's on there. I was actually pissed. Softball started the week before. And you couldn't really watch Nothing. any games either. And I'm just like, I watched the Fresno State UCLA game uh, softball on the website UCLA gave, which was the Pac-12 website. Um, but then this weekend, I'm just like, there's so many good games out. Luckily, I have ESPN Plus, and I got to watch some of them. Um, UCLA got beat two out of three by USF, which was big. Um, Florida got taken down by Miami two out of three. I saw um, Air Force knocked off LSU for a game. Uh, and then there was that one kid. What school was it that just went? Uh, K- with Caleb Pendleton went, uh, it was FAU. Florida yeah, Atlantic FAU, University. That's right. That's right. Um, first at bat, 
grand slam, no big deal. True freshman, first at bat, first collegiate bat, grand slam. Yeah, no big deal. Oh, wait, he gets up in the same inning and hits another grand slam. And uh, 8.13 p.m., 14 minutes ago, when Caleb Pendleton hit a grand slam in his first ever collegiate at bat. He's back to the plate with the bases littered again. Oh, my gosh. He has done it. Two grand slams in one inning for Caleb Pendleton. So his first two collegiate at-bats, he's uh, two for two, for, uh, eight ribbies, uh, eight extra base, eight extra base, or eight total bases, and, uh, and uh, two grand slams, um, which was done by, in the big leagues, by, we said this on the last episode, I think was Tatis um, Jr., his dad, Fernando Tatis Sr., did it off Chan Ho Park in the big leagues. So, But still, I mean, your first two, True freshman, you're 18, 19, depending on birthday, two grand slams. Welcome like to college baseball. And they were good, dude. They were pokes, man. Hey, you want to know something? Uh, speaking I do know speaking something. of trying to find where to watch it, so Jonah Johnson, who was a guest uh, a while back, playing college football in New Mexico State, family, very close family friends, uh, they played their first game on Sunday, yesterday. And – my dad was trying to find out where to watch. It was on Fox Sports Arizona. But Flow Sports, if you haven't heard of it. I saw that something on but don't you have to pay for that? It's or sign an, up? an annual. You pay one-time yeah. thing. It's like 120, 30. I don't That's know. That's 120 or 30 too much. They have everything, though. Everything. And now you're paying for another TV service, though. I'm not paying. I got the login. My the the, uh, the old business paid for that one. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll be getting the login too. A lot of sprints car sprint car racing on there, but no, they they had Jonas football game. They I they how they do they they it it was it was rough. They lost. all around. They lost. They lost. Yeah. So weren't they playing some division? That's neither here nor there. He did throw a touchdown pass. Um. Yeah, I I couldn't watch all of it, but what I did watch because uh, that was the um. Texas and the, the teams playing at Globe Life were on that station. Flow, the flow. I think so. Yeah, because uh, yeah. I went to try to watch it. And no, they have a bunch of stuff, man. I bet. Go check it out. Flow Sports. If you're looking for weird things sports wise, they might have it. It's they like the Ocho. Ocho. It's the Ocho. <laughs> it's yes, exactly Ocho. that. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. It, everything. Um. Anyways, look into that. That's all. And then obviously this uh, last week you had pitchers and catchers show up. Uh, spring training is about to get full underway. I don't think there's still a confirmation on the DH. Actually, I saw the pitchers for San Diego was were bunting yesterday. They posted it saying that there's no DH. So there is which no I'm very DH. Pissed about. Some aren't. I think Jeff Fry was on that, but like he wants to keep it the way it is. Really? I think so. I don't know about that. When when I say that is I really don't know about that. So I, 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 I don't know. I'm but not saying, yeah. I, I just wouldn't imagine he would be on board with that. I don't. I, I could be wrong. I am most of the time. No, you're. I just think that the, nobody wants to see a pitcher hit. I'm sorry. That was the one really good thing. I'm with you about the COVID season. No, I'm with you. Was no DH, and extended playoffs. And the extended playoffs I liked, but I did like the no days off. I, I did, and we talked about that last time. Yeah, I, I love the no days off. It gives you an opportunity to actually use your team. And not have guys go back to back games or, or, you know, have, and then, that yeah, we kind of need to shit can the runner at second base, extra inning. Yes, I don't like that. And I know a lot of people that play baseball don't like that. Luplo said it perfect when he came back. He said, you know how hard it is to get on second base. Yeah. Uh, so. If you're going to do anything like that, do the derby thing. The derby idea, I like better. If you're going to do anything, if you're not going to let them just play until it's over, don't, don't put a guy at well, second base. And then Griffey's now part of the front office and, <clears throat> Griffey said the game is not meant to be sped up. It's it's meant to be played. Yeah, but I think he's working in an area that works with like the youth side of the game and yeah, yeah but I mean maybe they'll still take an, a, an account of Somebody what he input. has to say. I mean, he's Ken Griffey Jr., the best player to ever play the game, on my point. Um, but yeah, I just think you know, just leave baseball the way it is and I don't know, except for the DH. That needs to happen. I don't want I don't want to see pitchers hit. I'd rather see, you know, a guy get up there and strike out 200 times and hit 20 homers and bat 230. So. Um, and then Fresno Pacific hasn't started yet either. Uh, it looks like the 26th 
they open with a double header uh, versus Simpson. And I think City's scheduled to start. Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to, I'll have to check on City. I thought it was soon, though, but I have to double check. I don't want to say anything and be wrong. So, uh, but look out for City. Look out for Reedley College, uh, COS. Uh, you know, again, Fresno Pacific and then Fresno State will be getting back underway. Uh, go support all of our local teams, us high schools. We are also getting ready to go. Again, I'm not sure the confirmed date. I've seen the 20th. Uh, of March, I've seen even later. Uh, so I'm not quite sure when exactly we're going to get going, but uh, baseball is looks like it's going to be in full swing here. No pun intended. So yeah, get out there and support if you can uh, stream it, you know, obviously no fans, but uh, any way we can help or, or fans can help their teams, uh, please do. And uh, again, we got a great guest today, uh, Steve Detweiler. Uh, hero from the uh, game three of the college world series in 2008. Uh, so we'll be right back uh, with Steve Detweiler. All right, everybody, we're back. This is the hit or die podcast episode 98. Our guest, Steve Detweiler. He is the wonder dog of the wonder dogs. I had the, I could say the that. data, like legendary, right? Like, <clears throat> I don't think anybody in Fresno or associated with Fresno State Athletics will ever forget Steve Detweiler, the name Steve Detweiler. Uh, Thanks, guys. Yeah. No, we appreciate it. Have a good not. day. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. And we'll get into we'll get into the 08 run. Uh, and we were saying before we we uh, we left you off of the the uh, 08 reunion that we had a few months back, uh, and Chad had uh, said the easy one to blame there was was Ribera. It's all love, Rose. <laughs> love you, Rose. <laughs> uh, went to San Rafael High School, three-sport athlete. Was uh, drafted in the 40th round by the Houston Astros in 06. And uh, chose to come to Fresno State. And let's let's just start there. What was the what, – was Fresno State the one on – the only one on the list? Or was there a reason you chose to be a Bulldog? Man, so it, it was actually a crazy story. Kind of a, a unicorn story where it doesn't really happen too often. So – I was, you know, not really highly recruited out of high school at all. Um, you know, I played at a pretty high level, but the school I played for, we never really had a bunch of success. The last guy to really come out of San Rafael was Jesse Foppert. And so really all my recruiting came from NorCal, um, but I only talked to three or four schools. I was talking to USF, uh, Pepperdine, and then Fresno came in much later, actually. Uh, I once the draft happened, I got drafted by the Astros. That's kind of when I got my phone calls. Um, I was basically ready to go to College of Marin, the local JC. Um, had my books, had my classes, and I was going to school the week before I signed my scholarship to uh, to Fresno State. So it was it was just happened to have a really good week down in SoCal, where uh, the pitching coach back then, Ted Silva and, and Matt Curtis, were down there, and they got to see see me have a really good week and and they took a chance on me and I when I my first class I was a week late at the Fresno it just it's just the way it happened this that at that time uh so you get on campus I mean was it easy for you at that point or were there not I mean was Pepperdine and, and USF was just an offer better with Fresno uh yeah I mean I I I was really big on being close to home and I also just I, you know you hear about all the bulldog greats and, and also they were ranked 24, 25 the year before. Um, and so I wanted to go to a program where one, I feel like I could develop a lot, but also two, that was, that was close to home and also affordable enough for my, my family. We weren't extremely well off. Um, so kind of the Jesuit schools made it a little more difficult for that. Um, and then uh, Fresno came in and just seemed like a great fit to go play at a very high level for a great coach. Now, speaking of a great coach, which he is, did you ever meet or talk to him before getting on campus? Batesville. My first interaction with Batesville was my very first practice. I never <laughs> talked to the guy, never met the guy. Um, and, and, you know, my first practice, I was like, there's Bates. They, you know, he's, you know, he's a big, strong guy. And I was like, oh, my gosh, my, my coach has a mullet. Here, here, let's, let's go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> was it, the, but, the, uh, way he, the way he is, he's known to be tough and disciplined. And um, were you ready for that? Did, Cause you didn't know what you were really getting yourself into until like you said, your first practice meeting him and seeing how he is. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a 
a, just an idea from, you know, my first three days at, at, at the, at the house with Gavin and, and a uh, uh, grub and, and Wetzel. So I kind of had a little idea of what I was getting into, but I didn't have much time to prepare for what it really was like that first day where it's, it's, it's go time. It's getting after it. And um, my dad was a football coach. And so I guess that was really the most ready I could have been. It's just the way my father raised me, but my San Rafael high coaches, I had, I had a different coach every year I was at San Rafael high. And so um, it, it didn't take long to really <laughs> get your eyes open and, and learn that you're gonna have to take it to another level if you want to survive in that program. Well, that was a pretty good recruiting class. I think Shepherds was in that class and Mendoza was in that class, right? I think Shep was a year before us, but yeah, it was me, before. Tommy, Amadi was with us. Um, there's some there's some real good ball players in that class. So you're do you have any uh bad moments when you're you first get in there in the fall and it's you know, you're not even teammates <laughs> holding you accountable or, you know, whether it's lifting or, you know, you know, the classroom is, is like a huge priority. Were there moments where you had to get put in place? Um, a few times, <laughs> a few times. <laughs> so the, the, my, 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 my first memory, my first vivid memory of being a bulldog, I think it was the first week of practice and, and Bates gives me the, uh, the practice plan to go put up in the barn and, being a week late to, to campus, I, I didn't know what he was talking about. I'm like, where the barn? What are you talking about? I had no clue what he was trying to say. And so being a freshman, I just put the practice plan of black on his clipboard, thinking he was just trying to make a joke or just being, I don't know what he was doing. And so sure enough, somehow the, the practice plan falls off his clipboard. It falls on the ground. He steps on it. I'm putting in first pace. And by the time I turn around, Bates is right in my face and just – letting me know how that's never going to happen again. <laughs> so um, that's one of my first memories. But classroom, uh, you know, I tried to go to every single class. I did my best. Um, I did have a hard time waking up early for a running class. And, uh, you know, Bates definitely had me wake up before him and put a little post-it note on his, uh, on his, day, on his door, just let, let, let him know that I was going to be at that class that morning. <laughs> but um but I learned a lot, man. It was it was fun. It was fun. And I, I definitely grew up a ton at Fresno. You kind of learned that expectation from your teammates more so than the coaching staff. Uh yeah, man. The, the team gets after it. I mean, those boys, you know, especially I mean guys like Danny Muno, um, they they kind of took the work ethic to a whole nother level where, you know, if you were just doing what you're told, you're not doing enough. Um and so, like I said, like it was a culture where if you're not willing to put in time, put in work, um, you, you weren't going to survive there, which is probably why we were able to go to a regional every single year, except for my, my last senior year there. And that's what I was going to say. You come into a program that just come off a regional run and some of those guys are still on the team, you know, with some bitterness and some fire and something they're working towards where you hadn't felt that yet, um, maybe saw it on TV, but you know, you're stepping into something new that, you know, they, you know, you're not ready for. Absolutely. I mean, when I, my first few days, like I'm looking at the outfielders who I'm surrounded with, I got Susdorf, I got Lappin, I got Ozzy Lewis, uh, Lowe's there. I mean, there's four guys that are going to get drafted in front of me. Like what a great opportunity to learn. And, you know, it was pretty easy to recognize right away that I'm, I'm probably not going to play much, but what a great chance to, to learn from these higher end guys and, and guys that were hungry guys that wanted to get after it. And you did play a little bit. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, that's a great point. And for those guys out there that are D one commits and that are going to go in as their freshman year, how often did you lean on those older guys for information and Hey, how do you guys do this? Or how do we do this? So you're not always asking the coaches, but they're older and seniors and juniors where you rely on them to help you uh, along the way. Well, I mean, you just, first you just watch how they work, how they get after it. Um, whenever you have an opportunity to ask a question, I, I wasn't really shy with that. Um, I was very lucky my sophomore year where some reason Susdorf kind of took me under his wing and we became curveball hitting partners where he liked the way I fed the machine and, and I just wanted to learn from him and, and seeing how he gets after it. Like, I, I don't think I grew more as a hitter ever than my sophomore year being able to hit with Susdorf all the time. And so, you know, I, I credit a lot of that, that whole run and all just learning how to hit a D1 pitcher from being around Susdorf at all times, because uh, what a better guy to learn from, you know? Yeah, he, he, he wasn't shy on his episode. He loved to hit and that's all he did 
what, 364, 363 days out of the year? Yeah, so. pretty much, pretty much. And you did play a little bit as a freshman. Uh, were you kind of surprised by that? Or, you know, I mean, Bates is not shied away from playing youngsters as they get into the program. No, no, especially if you can perform. But, I mean, I just I just wanted to be able to help out in any way I can. And I, I kind of recognized early on that there were some times where uh, uh, he loved his matchup guys. And so whenever a lefty came up, um, I think it was actually Susdorf who told me, it's like, hey, whenever there's a lefty in the bullpen and he's coming out and going to, you know, face a, a left-handed hitter, he's like, you need to have your batting gloves on. You need to have your helmet on. You need to be out in front taking swings. Like, if you want to get any at-bats, that's what you're going to have to do to catch catch coach's attention. And, and sure enough, I did it a couple times. And one time is a debt. Let's go. And, you know, hopped in there. And, and that's kind of how I got my opportunities um, that freshman year. You uh, created it. Yeah, well, you know, I wouldn't have known it if Suzerp didn't help me with it either, you know, so. It sounds so simple. But I think it's 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 key, too, is like you get a lot of freshmen that come in that are a little timid or they don't want to be the guy that asks a lot of questions because they don't want to be the annoying underclassmen. But they got to realize that the upperclassmen, the juniors and seniors, all they want to do is win. And they want however to happen, whether it be a freshman all the way to a senior, they'll do whatever it takes to help anybody out to win. And like when the younger guys get there, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to ask questions because that's a like you said, it's perfect. You get better almost being around your teammates and learning from them than you do as the coaches to a to an absolutely. Ex- absolutely. I mean, absolutely. And, and, and going furthermore, like every freshman who goes to their D one school is the best player on their team. Probably ever. They've probably never not been the best player on their team, you know, um, unless you're playing on these really, really high end programs. And so, you know, I remember showing up to our first practice and thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to start no problem here. And then, and then my hidden partners, Tommy, and I'm seeing them put ball after ball after ball on top of the, the, the weight room. And I'm like, Oh man, like, <laughs> all right. You know, it's, it's, it's a whole different animal from that high school, even the, the NorCal stuff that I played, it's a whole different animal. Your sophomore year, which I'm sure will go down as probably one of the greatest years in, in your baseball career. Yeah. Um, you know, in 2008, the dogs probably don't have the season that they wanted, you guys wanted to have, but somewhere in there, you guys win the, the, the whack tournament and get into the postseason and go on a run that even now, 12 years later, 13 years later, I mean, it still kind of gives me, it gives me chills. Uh, Can you kind of take us in and we've had the guys on and we've had some really uh, cool conversations with, you know, Ovi and and everybody really, um, you know, some of those moments for you and what that, that run through the tournament and then getting into the regional and just that those five, six weeks you guys went on. Yeah. Well, I know, I know, when we went to the WAC tournament, it just there was just a feeling of that we just didn't play well against Sac State. And it's just a matter of time till we have to get our game going. Um, and things really seemed to click in, in Law Tech. And then going to the regional, um, I remember talking to all the guys about how we've already beaten all these teams. We've beaten Long Beach. We beat Cal. We beat USD. Like, we've already played all these teams. And, and we're actually really familiar with, with the top dogs you know, Long Beach, because we played three times and we played San Diego. So we had a really good feel of, of what we were gonna, going into. Um, I think the hard part was just how to play at Long Beach um, because, you know, Fresno's a, a airport as to where Long Beach is a graveyard. And so that was totally a different thing. But once we came out of there, like our goal was to win a regional. And when we went to Arizona State, I think it was just there's nothing left to lose, man. And, and then all of a sudden you saw the freedom that we were playing with the, the just, you know, kind of goofball enjoy, like Bates said, roll the balls out resets kind of what, what, you know, there's no, there's no more dangerous team, especially when you got guys like, like Justin Wilson and, and, and our pitching staff that was just lights out throughout that whole time too. You know, you guys kind of go in to long beaches. I think it was the, the four seed, but you mentality wise or mentally, you're not thinking yourselves as a four seed there. Absolutely not. I think, I think we went to Long Beach thinking if we can win this first game, we're in the driver's seat. Um, because like I said, we've beaten these teams and, and we were confident that we can take them down. Um, we were confident in our abilities and, and at any point we knew how good we, we could be because we've seen 
we've seen how good we can be at times. So I don't think we had a, a four seed mentality at all. I think we were in it to win it the whole time. Yeah, and like you went to the Arizona State, they were the number one team in the country at the time. It's kind of going in, everybody thinks they're going to win anyways. So you already have that mentality of, like you said, there's nothing to lose. We got to, we're just, let's just go have fun. Everybody expects us to lose anyway. So why don't we just go have fun, take the pressure off and, and just play, play baseball. Absolutely. I mean, and, and there wasn't like you, you go to the first batting practice at ASU and these guys had to bring in buckets of baseballs to, <laughs> to, to keep on hitting, you know? And it's like, well, this is a joke. This is a joke. These guys are unbelievable. I, I, you know, being an MCAL kid, Stanford high, I got to play against Brett Wallace when he was at high school hitting balls 400 feet into the, you know, the wild care center against us. And so it's like, I, you know, I know what these guys are about and I know how good they are. Um, and, and why would you put pressure on yourself? There's no point. And so, you know, we just were out there having a good time. And, and I think once we won that first game in game two, I think they were the ones who got extremely tight. And I think we were the ones like, Hey, we can beat them once. Why anybody can win a baseball game. You know, we just saw it this past weekend when, USF beat two out of three against UCLA. You know, anybody can win one baseball game. I think you had Air Force also go knock off uh, LSU. We've talked to the guys, too, and one of the things we've asked is, is there a moment, whether in during the postseason, prior to the College World Series, that kind of turned everybody's uh, or changed the thought of that we do belong, we can win, uh, this is for real. There's something happening here. Uh, was there a moment for you? I know everybody's kind of said one at bat, one, one hit, but do you have a, a moment that you thought like, man, this is, this is for real. Gavin's grand slam, <laughs> you know, Gavin's grand slam at Arizona state. When we did that, we took a lead and, 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 and we were now the ones kind of taking it to them. I think that changed everything. And then we came out with the W and then did it again. When you beat Arizona State two out of three, and they lost what three games that year at home. Yeah. You can beat anybody in the country. That that that's a that's a monster you just took down, you know. Um, but I would say that one swing of the bat when Grant when Gavin hit that grand slam, that's when everybody was like, It's it's on. This might this could be something special. And then Sus makes that play and uh to end the game and you know, you know, mission somewhat complete i mean you guys got to feel happy just even to get to omaha you know and you win the win a super regional you know what was that what was that little celebration like because you guys didn't have a lot of time we've talked about it you had to get ready and then get back on the road to go to omaha did you guys have a little bit of fun with that i mean i i don't remember doing much actually after that i remember i think we got back to the hotel i had a buddy who lived in arizona who's been a childhood friend of mine since I was what six Sean Waite, and and so he happened to be at the game and he's wearing you know he's wearing his Arizona State gear but he's cheering for the Bulldogs and you know there's 4,000 fans silent and he's the one screaming so me and him just went to a dinner and kind of it was almost a quiet dinner like did that really just happen because like I said that was a monster we just took down but I I didn't we didn't go out and do much I think it was we had we had an early flight we had to get home <laughs> you know we we're going to Omaha man that's just that thought though, going to Omaha, like that's what, as a college division one player, that's what you play for. And to actually have that. I to mean, live I it. Yeah, yeah. To live it. It's just, I don't even know what that feeling, you know, could be like, but like you said, you're flying home and then you're getting up, you're packing and you're flying straight to Omaha. There wasn't much time to celebrate that super regional because you know, the business wasn't done yet. Yeah. I mean, well, we, we had to do the same thing. We got home from SAC, had to fly to Louisiana got home from Louisiana, had to go to Long Beach, Long Beach to Arizona. Like it's just, it was just kind of a routine in a way. Um, but, but yeah, man, I mean, everybody dreams of going to Omaha. My, my ultimate goal, like I never growing up, I never thought of myself as being like an MLB guy. I always wanted to be a D one guy. And then to go to the mountaintop and go play at Rosenblatt, you know, with, with some of your, your best guys, like that's, that's one of the greatest feelings knowing that it, you're going to do it. It's, it's going, you know, and, yeah, man, that was that was a fun time. Was there a wow moment getting to Omaha and like, hey, we're here? Like, are you talking like when we're flying there and we're in the middle of a or like when you get into the like, state, wow, like when the you're ceremony? Is <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, what I thought was pretty cool was going to Rosenblatt, not knowing 
any fans there, but then you're sitting with your whole team signing autographs before the whole thing starts for two hours. They have a two hour time limit to have fans come sign autographs and, and it didn't stop. The two hours was completely filled. It's like, Whoa, this is, this is cool. This is pretty neat. Um, that's, that's kind of one of the, the first moments I remember being like, Oh, this is, this is a big deal. This is big time, you know? Um, and that, that was kind of, that was pretty fun. So there is a backstory here. You'd had an injury um, with your thumb, correct? Yeah. So what were the what was the details? What was the we want the real it was, a real truth what's the of story that? of the hand? <laughs> the real story of the hand. So it was a Tuesday game down at Long Beach. Um, and it was just a regular season game. I think it's two or three months before before the whole run, or it's a, it's a month before the run or something, but it's a Tuesday game in Long Beach, and uh, and I steal second base. And I slide head first, slide head first. My thumb just grabs on the bag. And I felt it was just a jam. Like, hey, I just jammed my finger. It's not that bad. I'll be fine. Um, sure enough, the next day it's all black and blue. I'm like, okay, well, you know, hey, I went to the trainer's room. Like, I got a really bad jam here. Um, you know, what do you think? And so they, they're like, okay, let's go get some x-rays and MRI on it just to make sure. And so I go to this hand specialist and he doesn't even do an x-ray or an MRI. He just grabs my thumb to the sides of it and just kind of pushes it down. And sure enough, it just goes, whoop, just slips right out. And I was like, okay, that's not, that's not normal. Um, and then, and, and, and what was came out of that meeting though, that pumped me up was it was completely severed. It was completely torn out a little UCL tendon in here or whatever they call it. Um, and it completely was ripped. And my question was, if it's completely torn, is it just a pain tolerance thing? Can I still play on it because I can't damage it any worse? Um, and he said, go ahead, give it a shot. So I, you know, gave it a, a few days of uh, just letting it heal a little bit, started swinging. And I, I was a pretty, pretty tough kid back then. And so tried to just stick through it, um, tried tape, didn't like the tape and just decided that you now it's just, it's just a little bit of pain. And so uh, a little bit of pain quickly turned into a lot of pain after a few swing and misses. Um, but that was the only time it really hurt was, was one catch in a ball. Luckily my, my catch partner was Sosdorf, So that wasn't too big of a problem. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but swinging and missing that was, that hurt like a son of a gun. You guys make a run there towards the end. You get to the final series with Georgia, which again, even at that point, again, it's, it's gotta be the same mindset of what do we have to lose? Well, now you almost have everybody in the stadium rooting for you too. But not expecting you. These people still don't expect you guys to win. Yeah. Well, no, not at all. I don't think anybody expected us to win a game there. I mean, you know, everybody's saying, it, "Enjoy Omaha." You know, it's so nice to meet you guys. And it was like, it was like we're, you know, we're. It was like enjoy your time here, kind of. Um, and and but I remember, I remember, you know, being there and being in right field. You know, you have a bunch of fans behind you. I had a bunch of North Carolina fans who had made relationships with North Carolina from the two years prior because they were playing Oregon State in the finals. Right. And so they have some big North Carolina guys back there who are just, you know, on you the whole game. Um, but then you take them down and then you come back game one against Georgia and they've got Fresno State painted across their chest, you know? It's like it's like the whole stadium kind of just became behind us, the, the underdog story. People were loving it. And, and it almost turned into not a home game, but it felt like, you know, people had your back. People were, they knew who you were when you're walking around town trying to get a sandwich, if, you know? If anything, the crowd was was split. Maybe even more so for Fresno State. I, I wished I could have been there. Game three. I mean, have you watched it? Did you get, did you watch it when Fresno, or the ESPN re-aired it? So I, I watched it, uh, I, I think it was my second time uh, during the COVID when they played it on ESPN. And, you know, I got to sit there and tweet and, I got to watch it with my, you know, my whole family, my wife, my wife never seen it either. She didn't, you know, she's heard about it, but she's never like, I've seen it. And, and so um, we got to watch it as a family uh, over the COVID times. And that was, that was pretty cool to sit there and be tweeting with the guys. You know, that was, that was a blast. Yeah. I did remember seeing some of those tweets. I think Ribera was leading the charge. I think Ribera had some <laughs> tweets towards some Georgia guys too yeah. during, during the game. <laughs> that guy's not shy, man. <laughs> I love it. I love, I love it. it too. We all, we were a total, total agreement, by the way. Um, kind of just, 
like you said, a great day to have a great game. Uh, can you just talk about that day? It was anything different. Did you eat, you know, a little more Wheaties that morning or anything different? Well, no, I know the night prior, me, Susdorf, and Nick Hom would go to uh, old Chicago and get a calzone before every, before every game. We didn't do it one time. And that was the time we lost to, uh, we lost to North Carolina. And so Susdorf was like that. This is what we're eating literally the rest of the trip now before every game. Um, and it was phenomenal pizza. So I was good with it too, <laughs> but um but no, I mean, that's just a, a regular day. You know, I, I remember before the game, me and Flothy were in right field shagging for batting practice and being able to toss balls to the fans. Like, I'd never tossed a ball to a fan before. Um, you know, we were always really trying to keep our stuff because we weren't going to get any more stuff that trip. So being able to just toss balls and have fun with the fans, I think that was kind of the, the really being able to be loose and, and do something you got to, you really got to enjoy that moment prior, but in game, I don't remember a thing, man. I was completely blacked out and just, just ball. And, um, I, you know, I can't remember being in the box that game. I remember other games, but not that one. Now I want to go into the thumb issue and how painful it was to swing and miss. How was your batting practice routine now since then? I mean, did you take the same batting practice routine as everybody? Did you take a little less hacks just to kind of take some wear and tear off of that? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I completely changed my whole batting practice routine where, you know, there'd be days where I would only take five swings and then get out there. I know Louisiana Tech, it's for some reason, La Tech, it started swelling up real bad. Um, and I remember talking to Bates about it and it was getting to the point where I was like, it was, it was really hurting. It was really hurting to where you could barely even squeeze the bat and hold the bat. Cause I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really a finesse swinger. I kind of was a grip and rip and just give it all you got kind of guy. Um, and so I swung and missed, I remember swinging and missing. I think I struck out two or three times in a game and just the next day was just, it was just so sore, so sore. And so Bates was like, okay, don't, don't swing today. Like just kind of show and go. Um, and I did that in Omaha too, where it'd be like, okay, here are my five swings that didn't feel so good. Let me get a couple more. That's it. But we, yeah, we completely, you know, changed up from the regular routine that we did just to manage the pain because it, there were some, there, there were definitely days where, it hurt worse than others. That was it, kind of tough too. Were there at moments, especially then, right? Cause I mean, it's, it's winter go home. It's, it's all or nothing. Was there any talk about not having you in the lineup? I mean, I, I learned that li li listen to the videotape of the game. Um, but you know, I, in my mind, I was doing everything we could to do to be prepared to go. Um, if Bates took me out, you know, I, it, I would have had to accept that. Um, he never told me that he was thinking about it. I really, really happy he didn't tell me he was thinking about it. Um, but I, I couldn't have blamed the guy because I, you know, you look at the look at the stats. I wasn't performing. I wasn't doing too much. I got a knock here and there. Um, you know, my my hits leading up to that game three were, you know, they're big. They're home runs. They're you know hit three or four home runs in, in the the run. But I don't think anybody was expecting what happened on game three. I, I know I sure wasn't thinking anything like that, you know? So you go four for four. Uh, you lead off the campaign with a, a shot, the oppo shot, which you would be in a right fielder. I mean that you might've caught that ball. Oh, are you kidding me? That ball hits me in the back. <laughs> I, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't shy to go to a fence or two. That guy, I don't know how he didn't get that thing. That thing was right there. Uh, and then I think the uh, – which, which I think you guys took the lead there. And then double, I think, your next at-bat in the gap. Mm -hmm. uh, a two-RBI double. Mm -hmm. And then you hit an absolute mammoth tank for a three-run shot. Uh, again, four for four, six RBIs. And then the ultimate is you catch the final out. Now – I nobody knows. I don't think the guys knew. Sussdorf didn't know. I don't think. But that ball got put in your back pocket. <laughs> I you. Mm -hmm. Where what happened to that baseball? So in Arizona State, when we won game three and we were going to Omaha, Sussdorf makes that sliding catch, throws the ball 30 feet up in the air. <laughs> we're dogpiling it. And then and I heard that Amadi or somebody ran out and got the ball. So Suz didn't even get the ball that he made the final out on. So it was kind of like uh, something we were talking about leading up to that day. And, and you know, um, that ball comes flying down. 
I catch it and instantly in my mind it's just like it wasn't even like I had the game of my life let's save this ball it was more like I'm not going to make the same mistake this guy just made let's put this you know this thing in the back pocket and 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 I remember I remember going to the after the whole ceremonies are all done I put the ball in one of my cleats um just to make sure that it found its way back home and nobody would take it couldn't come out of storage because I was like I got to make sure I hold on to this thing um and so I held on to the ball for about 10 years. Um, it was in my trophy case for about 10 years. And we had that 10 year reunion. And, and um, I just felt like it'd be, it was time for the, the, the community of Fresno to be able to enjoy that ball. And so I gave it to Bates and, you know, I said, Hey, you know, this is for you. Um, we texted later on said, maybe it's best to give it to the school, just to let everybody enjoy it. And so when my boy grows up and he's going to be able to appreciate what that had happened, we can go down the state together and go take a look at, uh, at the facilities in that ball again together. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know. Didn't know that. I don't think anybody really knew the the story behind it. Um, so, and then when you guys get back, obviously you have a, just a monster parade and the to see the city uh, rally around you guys. How was that moment? And just seeing everybody out there, the uh, you know, P. Biden and soaking it in with you. Yeah, I don't even know how to explain it. That was such that was such a special day um thousands and thousands of fans up and down you know the streets uh you know when you even when we landed we landed people were waving the newspaper at the bus that you're driving by um but you just felt that the diehard bulldog fans man the fresno community it's just so it's so special it's such a you know it's, it's a small little pocket in california but but they love their sports man they love their sports and 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 you know i i have one of my kids who actually just you know, not my kids, but one of my high school kids I do lessons with since he was 13, he just committed to Fresno State. And he's asking me questions about it. I'm like, dude, like, you have a chance to play for Batesville at Fresno State. Like, it's it's a it's a mini little kind of, you know, SEC Big Ten kind of feel where it's like there's an event going on and that team's good. The town shuts down, you know, and, and it did at that parade. The town shut down. Everybody was at that parade um, and and – man was that stadium wild like i remember that i remember being on the ground sitting with all the boys and the ground just kind of rumbling whenever you know they would cheer or something that was pretty pretty cool That's what crazy. was the date game i don't three. know i was i was playing ball i was a, oh game three yeah i was trying i was trying to find the gate the the date what the actual date was what if that june 20 you know, something right june 20 something it was somewhere in there just that wilder day <laughs> that Weiler day no um I, dude, I just i love talking about it every every it always gets me excited and it's one of those things where we always to say everybody remembers where they were when they watched it or, or heard it or whatever the case may be um how close are you still with guys uh from that from that ball club uh man i honestly i hate it's, it sucks to say i don't talk to too many guys much anymore i mean my, my best friend from childhood lives three blocks from me and I don't see him too often. I, I'm, I'm busy, man. I got, I got two kids, you know, I got a four-year-old and a, a newborn or one-year-old now. Um, you know, I'm trying to run my own little stings business, you know, and, and I'm trying, I, I stay busy. I stay busy, but I, I do wish, I do wish I kept a better touch with some of those boys for sure. Cause uh, you know, Gavin, Gavin and Sussdorf, especially those were some really special people for me and did a lot for me in my career for sure do you have any uh stories that are available for us on the show right now that you could go back like just memories that hit you of that your time at fresno state in in a whole um you have some memories that you could share with us besides obviously 08 i mean that's the biggest one or the uh can't get it on get it on oh yeah j-dub and uh Sesdor fighting <laughs> Yeah, man, that was great. That was fun. I mean, and, and <laughs> nobody even knew it. Nobody knew what was going on, too, man. It's just like all of a sudden they're brawling. And and it wasn't like it wasn't like everybody was running to kind of break it up. It was like everybody was running to like, who's going to get who, you know? Um, but but those boys are so competitive, man, especially J-Dub. I don't think J-Dub gets talked about enough because he is an unbelievable competitor. Unbelievable competitor. Even to this day, like, like. I'm a Giants fan, man. I cannot watch to wait to watch the New York Yankees right now. Like to watch Judge and Wilson do it together, like that's gonna be a blast. Um, but to go to go back to your your what you were saying, um, 
about just like the days at Fresno. I, I just, I loved being in the cage basically every single day with, with Susdorf and, and, and the outfield crew and just putting in work and putting in work and working on your craft and feeling rhythm and talking baseball. Like that was some of the, the, the greatest times in my life. And that, and I know what me and Sus talk a lot about and what Bates talks a lot about. I get to pass on to, to my kids that I do lessons with now to the kids that I coach now. And just, you know, like there are some really good ball players up in Marin right now, but the level of competitiveness is just, it's just, it's a whole different level that these kids sometimes don't understand where, you know, you're not busting your butt running down to first after your fifth swing. What, you know, are you doing that with the purpose? Like being able to just take it to a whole nother level. I feel like a lot of kids don't really understand how far it can go at that high school. Cause you're so, you're so young, you're so mature still. And you're, and you're the best player in your team, you know? Um, but being able, yeah, getting after it and playing at that such competitive level at everything you do, best bunner, best curveball hitter. It was so competitive. I miss that. Yeah. Cause Bates all in his, uh, you know, his BP rounds, if you don't get that first sack bunt down, you lose that whole round of hitting. Man, did did Rivera get around his freshman year? I don't know if Rivera <laughs> got around his freshman year. He couldn't lay down a bunt, and then you know, and two years later, though the boy, the, the boys leading the nation in home runs. So I guess who, yeah. who's showing who right there? <laughs> That's funny. I was watching some some just some clips the other day of, and it was Aaron Judge in a cage at Fresno State, and even he was work. I mean, no different. I think he he missed one of them. And that was it. He got out of the cage. So no favorites. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's Bates, you know, do your job. And if, if we all do it together, if we can do this as a team, we're going to win. You know, that's, that's what I, that's what I think. I lost my junior senior year. Cause I didn't start every single year. My junior senior year, I didn't start every game. Um, I think I lost that fire of, of just, you know, being able to compete at that high level because man, I, 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 I hit the mountaintop. I hit, I hit the, the, the ultimate goal for me was to, like I said, be a D one ball player. And then to have that game, I think I lost that fire, which is why I had my spot taken my, my junior year to Dusty Robinson, who was a hell of a ball player, yeah. you know, um, which was the right move at that time. I think still too. We talked kind of briefly earlier. What, what's going on now? You're, you're, you'd step down uh, as the high school coach. So what do you got going on now? Yeah, so I, I was coaching at Sanford High for nine years, actually. As soon as, as, soon as I left uh, Fresno, I came back and helped out the school that I'd been to because I knew there had been just so many coaching changes throughout the year, um, and I knew how much uh, a consistent coach can do for, for a, a high school kid, and especially at the high school at Sanford High where, you know, it's, it's more than just baseball over there. It's, it's a little bit of, you know, parenting and, and making sure your kids are going to class and they're, and they're, they're on top of their stuff. It's not a – high-end sports, you know, machine school. Um, and so I wanted to give back to my school. And so we did that for nine years. COVID hit and I had a one-month-old baby. Had to make the decision to step back and, and get away from the high school stuff just to protect my, my, my family. Um, and now I'm doing my own baseball organization, Stings Baseball, up here in, uh, in Marin County. Uh, we got teams from eight years old all the way up to 18U. Um, I do lessons all the time, and I mean, I love being able to pass on the stuff that I've learned from my coaches, from Susdorf, from you know Bates, onto these younger guys. Because um, uh, there's, like I said, there's some good ball players. There's good ball players everywhere, um, but uh, that's that's what I'm doing, and I I get to do what I love. So I'm not really sure if I'm working really at all. I get to hit every day. That's awesome. <laughs> it's so uh, it's work sometimes, sometimes, especially with the younger guys, but. Uh... Steve, I just yeah. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day, man. This was uh, this was fun for us. Such a just such a big name around here, and and played such a big role. And you know, you you like you said, you took him to the mountaintop. I guess uh, obviously it's a team effort. There's a bunch of moments in there. Uh, you know, the one the, I will say this before we before we end. The one at bat that always stands out to me was against Rice was Muno. I mean, Muno hit a tank. And I'm thinking all these guys, the, nobody's going to stop these guys. And Rice is known for pitching. And I just felt like at that moment after, I think you guys hit like six home runs that day. Um, you know, first time in the World Series in I don't know how many years, since the early 90s. 89. 91, and uh, one of those. Yeah, I just, it, I saw, I was like, man, there's, there's, 
there's something going on. I just felt like uh, I always remember Muno's tank. That's all. I Absolutely. Know. I mean, well, everybody's. I mean, you know, Ovi hit one. You know, yep. did Ribs hit one? Yeah, I think I hit one so in game one. Yeah, I hit one that one. That one also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who? I mean, that's when if we could hit like that, man, with our staff, it's we're unbeatable. We're unbeatable. And and if Danny Muno's doing it as a freshman. You know, he wasn't a really big power guy. He was just a, you know, kind of a, a I'm going to piss you off and hit a thousand foul balls before I get a little dink off you, you know. But when he's doing it, it like, you, I don't think there was a team in the country that could have beaten us through that run. I really don't. And I think we played some of the top teams. Yeah, you did. No I think question. We, we showed it. No yeah, doubt about I mean, it. We were hot. <laughs> nah, it's still fun. I, I've got it DVR'd. I might have to watch it again. Uh, I was watching weekend. game two the other week, other day. Game two is my one of my favorite games. That was a that was a battle. Yeah, that game was a battle. Well, I remember yeah. I was they, working. They, I was working that night, and I had it on all the way to the job site. And I'm like, dude, I got to go see what's going on. And you guys were losing. You guys fell behind real quick. And I go back and I find zero. Thing, next thing you know, you guys are like within two runs. And then a couple innings later, walk. You guys are leading the game. It was just crazy. The one I didn't get to watch that one. I had got to listen to it. But uh, Dude, if you if, if you're if you're gonna watch a game, watch game two. That's that's the one I probably I have a DVD of that one because that that game was a, a fight and and going down five zero and then before you you know a blink of the eye you're you're up like against Georgia like that doesn't you know that doesn't happen too often man that was that was a that was a blast that was my favorite game. Yeah, it was meant to be. It's meant to be. You darn right. Yeah. Yep. Well, Steve, yep. again, thank you for doing this, bro. We. uh Hope all the best for you and uh, the family, the young ones, maybe future Thank Bulldogs. Appreciate there. It. Uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but uh, that's baby East. Yeah. There you go. Episode uh, 90, 98. Hit or die podcast. Hit or die.